all of the hazards found in a sewage plant are magnified when entering a confined space. An accident or chemical exposure can very quickly become life-threatening, and in fact, year after year, lives are needlessly lost. What makes a confined space so dangerous? It may have egress problems. That means getting out may be difficult. It may have a different atmosphere from what we're ex exposed to normally. And it may have specialized hazards as a result of what is in the confined space or the work that's going to be done in the confined space. Welding offers its own hazards. Cutting pipes offer their own hazards. Uh, sandblasting operations offer, offer their own hazards. Unclogging block sewers have hazards associated with them. Two Toronto workers had a very close call while welding in a gas-filled chamber. The alarm system for their air supply failed, and they were forced to escape without oxygen. We were in a very bad situation. We had to come out of that tank without oxygen, no breath at all, and we couldn't take the mask off because if we take it off, you're never getting out. If it's pure gas, you won't take in. They'll die right in the spot within seconds. Defining a confined space is the first step in developing safe, confined space entry procedure. Health and safety legislation may offer only a vague definition, which can be easily misinterpreted. What is a confined space? Now, you know, by definition, you can work your way around that, depending whether you're management or whether you're a health and safety activist, right? So you have two different points of view. I'm looking at, we're confronting each other. Now, as far as I'm concerned, when you have a source of hazardous material, hazardous gases, noxious material, noxious gases, uh, in the workplace, any hole in the ground, I'll just use that term, a hole in the ground, any space at all, as far as I'm concerned, is a confined space. So you have to do your monitoring, take all the precautions uh, that are required by the regulations. Oxygen is normal. Health and Safety Acts outline some of the procedures to be followed. They should include such measures as training, securing permits, blanking and locking out, testing and recording, proper breathing apparatus, harnesses, emergency procedures, and buddy system.